water bottle. These patches from growing larger, one can help, for example, prevent these patches from growing larger. Try to avoid using plastic water bottles as much as possible. One can avoid using plastic water bottles as much as possible. And always dispose of the bottles responsibly. Okay. Uh, that gives you an idea how these plastic in the ocean here, like uh, this one here, okay, or as you can see here, okay, it just really, it's a huge and expected something. Okay, uh, did you follow this please? Okay, uh, by this basically I will end up this uh, section which I talk mainly about the water or the source of water and all its what you call uh, pollution and other factors. And now I'm going to move with you to a new thing here, okay, or other section, okay. <laughs> We're going to talk about basically that new section here, gaseous air pollution. <clears throat> Okay. <clears throat> At the beginning, of course, I want to talk about general here, <clears throat> which is already some information you may already you know it, but at least to Unlike ourselves in this one here, <clears throat> okay. And now to mention, of course, now, as humans became more numerous and industrialized, as humans, okay, uh, become more numerous and industrialized, Uh, simply, of course, that air pollution developed into a much more extensive problem. <clears throat> so, as humans become more, more numerous and industrialized, air pollution developed into a much more extensive problem. Okay. And of course, basically what happened, especially in the beginning of the industrial revolution, and that they used to depend on coal, and that basically resulted for a lot of problem. To mention this point here. No. Problem, because coal was the major fuel. Because coal was the major fuel. Of course, used to generate heat and energy for machines. Okay. Uh, the other point, of course, to mention here. <clears throat> that air pollution became intense at the beginning of industrialized revolution of the, or, sorry, of the industrial revolution in the early 1800s. Okay, to mention this point that air pollution became intense at the beginning of the industrial revolution, which is in early 1800s, which is already you know about. And of course, this is as a matter of fact, basically this lead or resulted into severe pollution this is led or resulted into severe pollution by sulfur dioxide, which is SO2, 
by sulfur dioxide and soots. And this, of course, they use this resulted in the severe pollution by sulfur dioxide and soot. Of course, in the industrial cities and towns, in the industrial cities and towns of Europe and the Americas. Now, what's happened here Okay, uh, usually sometime in the cities, okay, uh, the problems occur like this. I uh, also don't ask, I'm going to explain about the smog here. Because when the industrial comes in the area and becomes not easy to mix with the air, this is what is known as the smog. And basically I'm going to explain, for example, picture what happened here during most of these industrialized cities uh, of the Europe and so on. So let's talk about this one here a little bit. Okay, now, now, uh, since of course 1900, since 1900, that spreading industrialization, since 1900, spreading industrialization and new technologies and new technology. of course, as you know, have increased the emission of pollutants. So since 1900, spreading industrialization and new technologies have increased the emission of pollutant. <clears throat> uh, now to mention about this uh, phenomenon which is occurring here, uh, sometime we call it atmospheric inversion. We talk about it here a little bit now. That air pollution can uh, can be especially severe. The air pollution can be especially severe when the lower atmosphere. when the lower atmosphere is stable and calm. Okay, so as I mentioned that air pollution can be especially severe when the lower atmosphere is stable and calm. And as I mentioned, and these conditions often occur beneath and these conditions often occur beneath we call it an atmospheric beneath an atmospheric inversion. Known as an atmospheric inversion. Okay. Uh, basically, what is this here? As I explained with you, a condition becomes when what you call uh, uh, the, uh, the the polluted ground level air, not able to mix with the base, basically with the cleaner air above. To mention this point here, okay. And these conditions often occur beneath an atmospheric inversion, which is to mention a condition which prevents a condition which prevents prevents that the polluted ground level air that prevent the polluted ground level air from mixing okay from mixing 
with, of course, with the cleaner air. <clears throat> from higher altitude. Okay, so that is basically what's resulted in this one here. Okay, so that basically this has been as it must as must beneath an atmospheric inversion, which is a condition which prevent or use the ground level air from mixing with the cleaner air from higher altitudes. Now, and basically, as already know, and if atmospheric inversion is accompanied by fog, and if atmospheric inversion is accompanied by fog. In this case, the pollution is known as smog. Okay. Which is basically that is a combination of that from smog and fog. <clears throat> okay. Now, for example, to mention some of these results that occur, especially in the 1950s and so on. Now, in the 1950s, Okay. In the 1950s, the killer smoke, rich in sulfur dioxide and suits. In 1950s, called the killer smoke, which is simply, of course, is rich in sulfur dioxide and suits. But rich in sulfur dioxide and suits. Uh, caused the death of thousands of urban people, caused the death of thousands of urban people, and of course, plus a quite a huge number of sephrotic or respiratory problem. Okay, and to mention this, and many more suffered from respiratory distress. Okay. And now to mention other point here. Are you following this okay, please? Okay. If you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, now, of course, pollution rich in sulfur dioxide, but the pollution rich in sulfur dioxide. Hmm. Is also known as Pollution rich in sulfur dioxide is also known as reducing smoke. Also known as reducing smog. Okay. And that we used to call, especially during that time, they used to call it the killer smog. And as to mention this point here, and the most famous killer smog <coughs> occurred in London, uh, Glasgow, and of course, and other industrialized centers of Europe, and the famous killer smog in London, Glasgow, other industrial centers of Europe, <clears throat> and also near what is known as, this is in USA, near Pittsburgh, okay, in USA. All right. <clears throat> Uh, 
Uh, of course, uh, as already you know, once this has been realized by the government and so on, they, they basically a measure has been taken, as a matter of fact, to improve the air qualities, okay, uh, recognizes damage, and basically, and try to basically to improve the air qualities of the urban environment by the following activities or factor, okay. So to mention, once scientists, if you want to put it down, that one scientist and government recognize the severe damage caused by the air pollution, okay, then they try to improve air qualities, they try to improve air qualities in urban environment, they try to improve air qualities in urban environment by number one here, which is already made note here. <clears throat> okay. One of them, of course, basically switching from coal to more a cleaner fuel. Switching from coal to more cleaner fuels. Uh, such as natural gas or oil, such as natural gas or oil, or a nu using nuclear power, or hydroelectricity. So one of the things, switching from coal to more cleaner fuel, such as natural gas, oil, or nuclear power, or hydroelectricity. And now, of course, the same thing as they did in Sudbury here, what's called by building this uh, super stack, and would basically try to take the pollutant to the air. So this is another method they use. The other point going to mention, constructing tall smoke st stacks. Constructing tall smoke stacks. Called smoke. <coughs> Stacks, okay, constructing tall smoke stacks, of course, to spread emission over a wider area. Constructing a tall smoke stacks to spread emission over a wider area. <clears throat> Now, uh, this technique or uh, 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 this tactic basically, and this tactic is known as, we call it as the dilution. This tactic is known as dilution solution, known as dilution solution to pollution. This tactic basically known as dilution solution to pollution. Uh, the other thing basically what they did at the time to, <coughs> uh, to reduce the pollution, they tried to centralize all that one. The other point I'm going to mention here, that centralizing energy production Centralizing energy production. Centralizing energy production. We call it in a large power plants. Okay. Centralizing energy production in the large and large power plant basically they did this to replace the relatively dirty 
they did this to replace okay uh, to replace as a matter of fact the relatively dirty burning of coal to replace the relatively dirty burning of coal in home fireplaces and furnaces okay so this is another thing try to do so to reduce that smoke and so on now the other thing what they did to reduce that or basically pollution now testing waste gases testing oh sorry treating waste gases sorry treating waste gases to remove some of their pollutant content treating waste gases to remove some of their pollutant content by reducing emission Now, this process, basically what they did here, uh, this process in which basically to reduce uh, what you call uh, uh, this measure to reduce the, uh, the, the smog, known as this process known as oxidizing smog. I'm going to mention to you, give me a second here. Okay, so basically these helpful measures are called oxidizing smoke. Okay. Now, to mention what happened here, of course, this resulted in other impact going to talk about it later on but at the moment i'm going to mention now this oxidizing smog develops in the atmosphere this oxidizing smog develops in the atmosphere what you call through a complex through a complex photochemical reactions so this oxidizing smog develops in the atmosphere through a complex photochemical reactions in which okay in which hydrocarbon in which the hydrocarbon and nitrogen and nitrogen ox oxidizes or ox sorry oxides in which hydrocarbon and nitrogen oxides are transformed are transformed into ozone. Into ozone, which is basically ozone is oxygen three, into ozone and other gases. Okay. As I mentioned to you here that basically oxidizing smoke develops and in the atmosphere uh, through a complex photochemical reactions in which hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxides are transformed into ozone 
which is O3 and other gases. And of course, this is of course resulted in other factor here to mention it to you. Okay. You follow that? Then basically ozone, then the other point that ozone and other gases as you know, harm vegetation, they harm vegetation. They harm vegetation and also and irritate the respiratory system. Ozone and other gases harm vegetation and irritate the respiratory system and eyes of, of course, of people. And now I'm going to, uh, this I'm going to write so that I don't want to miss anything here. Now, oxidizing also smoke develop under sunny conditions. Oxidizing smoke uh, develops, okay, under uh, sunny conditions. Okay, if basically what the hydrocarbons if the hydrocarbons and nitrogen if the hydrocarbon and nitrogen oxides also are present from the automobile. Or cars, whatever you put down. Automobile. Okay. And industrial emission. industrial emission and especially and particularly and particularly if an atmospheric inversion reduces dispersion. Okay. So basically, you put this oxidizing smoke basically develop under sunny condition. What happened here, if the hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxide are present from automobile and industrial emission, and particularly if an atmospheric inversion reduces dispersion. Okay. You follow this point here. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to go to another subtitle to deal with this one here. Subtitle here. We talk about how this happened. Sulfur gases. Okay. Gases emission. And transformation.
the subtitle here, Sulfur Gases, Emission and Transformation. <clears throat> now, to point this regard here that the sulfur dioxide which is simply SO2, okay, is one of the most important of the gases, or, or sorry, of the gases air polluted. Sulfur dioxide, which is this one here, is one of the most import, uh, important, is one of the most important of the gaseous air pollutant. You follow? Because what I'm talking about, gradually take these, and what will happen when they mix in the air? The other one, also have here, that hydrogen sulfide, which is, uh, you know, H2S. So as you mentioned that the sulfur dioxide is one of the most important of the gaseous air pollutant. Then we have the hydrogen sulfide, H2S, is also considered another sulfur gas. You got that? Then I'm going to mention this point, that what happened when these two combine together? Now, after they are emitted to the atmosphere of these two, after uh, they are emitted to the atmosphere, For that, the atmosphere here, make sure that you see, are you seeing this way? To the atmosphere, that the, the SO2 and H2S, okay, become oxidized. Okay, to another compound. to another compound, and what they do, and they ultimately form okay, sulfate. Which is basically, I'm uh, going to put it down here, SO4. So as I mentioned, after they are emitted to atmosphere, the sulfur dioxide SO2 and H2S become oxidized to another compound and ultimately form what is known as sulfate. Okay, I just mentioned before I would end my uh, lecture here. Now, because what happened here to see because of their negative charges. Now, the sulfate ion Okay, the sulfate ion carries a negative charge. Okay, which is basically in this case known as anions. I think I will continue with you next lecture because to be, uh, because this is going to give us some reaction here. Okay, just to stop it here. And the sulfate the sulfate ion carries a negative charge, which is in case anion. Okay, and later on, of course, the 
later on with the H2H going to oxidize to sulfate and so on. We'll continue with you next lecture. Did you follow this okay, please? All right? Yes. Yeah. So we'll continue with you because this is important to know and how sometimes going to reach how really they affect the other uh, layer in the atmosphere and so on. Okay. We'll talk about, and hopefully I will see you later on. Okay. As I mentioned to you, basically, I made what you call the, the Zoom meeting from 1 to 2.30. I'm going to stay there or even to 3 o'clock. If somebody come late, I don't know. And then I will be also try to. And please, really, I want everybody, if possible, to participate if there is a chance. Okay. Well, thank you very much. And I don't know if you, if you follow this okay today. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm going to end, to, to end it now. Have a good day.